Hello again. In this video, we are going to calculate the force constant for the carbon-oxygen bond in carbon monoxide using experimental infrared data and calculations. Recall that carbon monoxide has the following structure and it vibrates at 2143 wave numbers where the frequency nu is the linear frequency. Two important formulas which are useful also are that the angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times the linear frequency nu and also that we have a nice expression for the angular frequency it's equal to the square root of the force constant k divided by mu where mu is the reduced mass. For this particular molecule, the first thing we want to do is to calculate the reduced mass. And we're going to use the isotopes of carbon-12 for carbon and oxygen-16. So we consult our isotopic data and find that the mass of carbon is exactly 12.5. 0, 0, 0 atomic mass units. The mass of oxygen, 16, is 15.9949 atomic mass units. Later, we are going to want to convert the masses into kilograms. But it is helpful to first find the reduced mass in terms of atomic mass units so that we only need to make the conversion from atomic mass units to kilograms one time. So recall again that the reduced mass is equal to the first mass times the second mass divided by m1 plus m2. If we do this, we notice that at 191 point nine three eight nine atomic mass units squared in the numerator and in the denominator it is twenty seven point nine nine four nine atomic mass units. We notice that also that when we cancel we get the proper units for the reduced mass in terms of atomic mass units and we find that this is equal to 6.856 atomic mass units. We now want to convert from atomic mass units for the reduced mass to the units of kilograms. So we note that the reduced mass is 6.856 atomic mass units. And then we recall that one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66054 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Once we do that, we get that the reduced mass is equal to 1.1385 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Next, we recognize that the wave number frequency of our bond is equal to 2143 wave numbers which are inverse centimeters. We also recall that this is equal to the linear frequency divided by the speed of light. So to recover the linear frequency, we need to multiply the wave number frequency by the speed of light, convert it to centimeters per second. So this gives us that the actual linear frequency is 2143 wave numbers 2143 inverse centimeters times the speed of light, 
which is going to be 2.9979 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second. Recall that the speed of light is times 10 to the 8 meters per second, but since we're using centimeters per second, it's times 10 to the 10th. And this gives us a value of 6.424 times 10 to the 13th inverse seconds. As a point of comparison, recall that the frequencies for uh, visible light tend to be in the range of 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. So these are the lower frequency by about a factor of 10. The next part of our calculation is to recall that the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the linear frequency. So to convert the linear frequency to the angular frequency, which we're going to need, we need simply need to multiply by 2 pi. And once we do that, we get 4.0366 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. And this is now in terms of the angular frequency. The angular frequency omega is related to the force constant as the square root of k divided by mu. You can easily manipulate this equation by squaring both sides. You see that omega squared is equal to k divided by mu. One more manipulation gives us that the force constant k is equal to mu, the reduced mass, times omega squared, the angular frequency squared. So now we can finish the calculation in essentially one go here. We know that the reduced mass is equal to 1.1385 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Omega squared is equal to 16.29 times 10 to the 28 inverse seconds squared to the minus 2. We haven't shown to get omega squared, we simply took omega and squared it. units of kilograms here. When we multiply these terms, what we get is 1,855 kilograms per second squared. And we realize that kilograms per second square are not any sort of unit that we would imagine for forces or force constants. Therefore, we need to do a unit conversion at this point. Recall that one newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. So this is suggested by the fact that this is so close to the definition of a newton. We notice that the kilograms will cancel, the inverse second squares cancel, and we're left with 1,855 newtons per meter, because the meters are in the denominator. So this is the value of our force constant using SI metric system units. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.